Today I'm going to show you how I keep our power on when the temporary uh, fluctuations in power cause our inverters to either overload or uh, underload. kind of depends on what's going on. Uh, they were pretty good with lead-acid batteries, but now that we're running on lithium polymer, the voltage from the batteries actually goes above the safety limit for the inverter occasionally. Uh, so because of that, the inverter will momentarily shut off and it doesn't last for more than five or ten seconds but it's long enough to disrupt all the electronics in the house so we've got some trip light battery backups UPS's um, two of them have external batteries I actually use deep cycle uh, like the kind of battery that you throw on an RV and those will actually take it all the way through the night so if we have a low power day where we don't have enough solar and the power goes out in the evening um, it'll keep our internet modem on all night long so in the morning we get up our phones are still working if we you know have an incoming phone call or something we get it rather than having to basically be disconnected from the world until we get out and turn the inverters back on um, that having been said this one is actually just to keep a TV on when the power overloads which is only something that happens when the Sun is shining um, but it, it does seem to happen a couple of times a day, and it's uh, it's for my grandfather, so he doesn't want to have to deal with getting up and turning his TV on and trying to find the program he's watching. So I'm setting up a UPS to take care of that for him. Now, ordinarily, a UPS pretty much already does that, but if your power is out for long enough that it depletes the battery in your UPS, you have to manually turn it back on again. And that's well and good for most scenarios, but not for living off-grid, when you might have the power off overnight, every single night for a week. Um, so I contrived a means to make the UPS turn itself back on automatically. Basically, it's this schematic I drew out there. We've got two power supplies. These are simple 12 volt power supplies that I picked up at the thrift store for 99 cents a piece. Who knows what they were from? It doesn't make a difference. They output 12 volt DC, which you can see by looking for that symbol. That tells you it's DC. Um, I'm sorry, it's, it's hard to tell what I'm pointing at there. It's the uh, symbol in the middle. After it says 12 volt, it's got a long line and then three dashed lines underneath it. That is the DC symbol. Doesn't matter how many milliamps because all we're doing is running a couple of relays. Well, one relay with each one. So we've got a power supply that's going to be plugged into the battery side and a second power supply that's getting plugged into the perpetual power side. When the UPS is off, at least on a trip light, the perpetual power side is on regardless. So what we're going to do, plug this into the constant power, this into the battery power. When the battery power is on, this first relay is energized, which will actually turn it off. This is the normally closed side that we're connected to. The normally open side will be off, so or rather will be unused. So when this is not energized, this is closed. So the always power is running over to the second relay. When this is energized, it sends it to the normally open side, which pushes the button inside there, which I'll show you briefly in a moment. Um, when the battery power comes on, it switches this first relay from the normally closed to the normally open side, which breaks this circuit, which stops this from being pushed. Because when you want to turn this on, you have to hold the power button down until it chirps and comes on. So basically using a couple of relays and a couple of power supplies, and you can see I've got a loose end here which I need to solder in, I am simulating that activity. So you can see there's a button on the top. That button is right there. I just need to solder that wire onto these terminals, either that pair or this pair, it's all the same, they're the same switch. There's one more thing I did, and that is I removed the speaker. Uh, it was somewhere on the main board here. Um, basically, I just took the main board out, unsoldered the two contacts on the back, removed the speaker, 
That way it doesn't beep whenever the power goes out, because that's irritating. If you're watching TV, it starts beeping over the top of you. Um, there's one more thing that we did to this one, and that is we upgraded the battery. Uh, this particular unit we picked up on eBay for cheap. It didn't have a battery inside it. Originally, it came with a battery that was about half this large. So it had a couple of foam pads in there that were making up the difference. Uh, I happen to have one of this larger size battery. Um, this case was designed to house either size, so we just put a bar bigger one in there. Um, I do have another one of these, well, actually two of these, that I have, as I've already mentioned, put deep cycle batteries on. And what I did is I actually just ran the two power cords out the side, completely got rid of this battery, and then hooked up the two power cords to um, just some extensions that ran out to some deep cycle lead acid batteries. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all assembled here, and then we'll try it out. Okay, so here we go. The final assembled product. These could have been put on the inside if I was worried about cosmetics. I'm really not. Um, instead, I just punched a small hole in the, the case so that the power cords could run inside. Of course, we've got the, the one that runs on battery power, the one that's always on. Right now, you can see it's turned off. I've got it unplugged here. So I'm going to plug it in and now you can see it's on. Ordinarily it would just sit there and you'd have to turn it on but now if I unplug it it continues on and it's not beeping and it'll continue to remain on until the battery dies. Um, then after the battery dies power comes back on it'll just turn itself right back on again um, but because of the way I arranged it um, reconnecting the power just has no effect, it just continues to remain on, there's no beeping, everything's good. Um, now there you can hear it switched back over to uh, grid power instead of battery power. Um, the if, if you wanted to return this to its original functionality, other than the beeping, you could easily just remove these and you'd be good to go. And one more time, just in case anybody wants to try and copy what I did, these are the schematics. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to pay attention to which side is normally open and which side is normally closed on both relays. Um, and positive and negative really don't matter. I put them on there simply because you should, but um, these are both switches, so it really makes no difference uh, which side's which. Uh, the only other thing to mention is that this doesn't have a lot of free space inside it, so I ran all the cables to be long enough so that the two relays are sitting right here in this little bit of void that there uh, was designed into it, and then the cable that uh, connects over the switch just kind of runs across everything to the two relays.